Thank you for everyone who uh, hanged around for the session and the people who came in and out. Uh, and um, uh, so, as as we said in the beginning, uh, this this was not only a presentation, but at least for me, it was part of an experiment, trying to see uh, how how the system can actually uh, uh, operate in in a real setting. And um, um, although we didn't have uh, very many people. You know, attending with their devices and and laptops, I can still um, kind of report some some of the statistics that we gathered. So uh, we do have uh, basic um, basic data about a uh, number of people who, who attended the show. Uh, we had like thirty nine people logged in, and the total of one hundred and seven comments made. Now then, the system. Uh, had to go to work and generate the keywords. So it generated almost 400 keywords. Um, some people responded to the comments and promoted them. So that's about 23 comments promoted. Of course, there were a lot of open search art articles generated, and uh, I was kind of I was trying to browse through some of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, uh, I will show in a second, uh, you know, the, the results. But basically, if we go to any of these sessions, okay, and um, um, let's go for a second for the last one. Um, so, for instance, in in this case, what we have is uh, every uh, every comment, okay. Uh, so I'll recap quickly what the system, how it works, okay. We po uh, we, I mean, the users, right? It's uh, it's the audience who. Uh, who plays here? Uh, post their comments or micro microblogs. Now, every comment uh, actually generates topics, and this is automatically generated. Okay, so these topics uh, are a result of an analysis of text analysis uh, that is run in the background. Now, every keyword here is used in two different manners. One is it goes to the recommended articles, which is the database of articles that we requested the presenters to give us. So we actually run a text analysis on them, create some kind of an indexing table, and we are able to match the keywords to the limited set of articles, limited in the sense of as big as you know uh, the person provided us. Um, but they, their control set, their recommended set, and in this case, uh, we had just uh, this one article, promoted article towards communications, first Im imitation in infants. That's totally relevant because this is what you know the presenter gave us. But then uh, we use these keywords to search Google News, blogs. You just go out there on the internet, okay? And in that case, uh, some of the results are actually not not uh, as we expect. I mean, you might think that you know maybe the system has some kind of a sense of humor, because, <laughs> for instance, so uh, uh, let's let's look at the you know this was uh, last last session about pain, right? Yeah. So it, yeah. So let's let's look here. What, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. I, I will I will go and uh, get 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 things closer, right? So this was about pain, right? So this is what is the open open pain is pain at the pump rises right. <laughs> I mean that that's something that was on abc.12.com and because the comments were about pain, uh, this was. Yeah, Well, it, it, it did find something about pain. I don't think it kept any keywords from the music session in the beginning, but yeah. So the second one was uh, was maybe more of a, of a relevance. So the open search is basically going on a bunch of resources that are open, you know, like NBC Sports News, Google News, okay, and um, like this one, you know, also pain, right? Lakers practice without pain. So uh, yeah, I mean, some some words really need. This a better way of, uh, uh, how to say, like query extension, if you want to try to kind of phrase this in a more technical way, uh, or topic distillation, so that you know we know that the pain is really in the context of physical pain and somehow related to facial expression, and then maybe actually Google News is not a good place to look for that, or maybe it is, but it really, um, you know, we're, we're in how to find it probably NBC Sports, well, it might also have articles about real pain. So uh, so the, this is the difference between recommended, 
which is basically a controlled or closed world database, and, and open search, which is just going on the open link data. Yeah, so I don't know if did it answer kind of your question? Yeah. So so this is the, this is the main use of the system right now. And, and here what we have is, uh, you know, you can, of course, go and click on this article, and you, you have this available. Um, you can read this, right? So every show had its own set of recommended articles. So whoever was browsing the system, uh, based on the queries, or we actually put some of the talk abstract, abstracts in the beginning as we as we kind of seeded the system, we just took excerpts from the abstracts and also put them as comments. So we kind of started the system using this way. Because uh, the, the, the usage of, of the commenting mechanism is really, it's not a query, it's more of a microblog. So you want to have enough content there for the system to be able to extract some meaningful keywords. And then uh, based on these, and given that we do have a controlled set of articles, we can actually promote some articles automatically, knowing that probably they're relevant, but then there might be surprises. And this is where people kind of are also uh, expected to contribute is by, by promoting things that are recommended or interested, uh, that you might be interested in or that find it relevant. So let's kind of just recap, re recap the statistics. Uh, we have... Um, um, so there was an open discussion forum which wasn't kind of related to any of the talks. So uh, in that sense, there wasn't much going on there. Uh, and here are kind of a rough summary. Uh, you know, the green radius had five comments, biomass six. Body movement had 20 comments. Uh, you know, my initial talk, uh, the provocateur had 20. So maybe in the beginning, you know, people were more aware of using the system than kind of declined. Uh, some kind of just by, by talking around and asking people. I mean, so for instance, some technical talks had, you know, they were a little bit uh, difficult for people who are not in the area to comment on. So it really depends on the nature. If, if, if this is something that people already kind of have familiarity with, they might have easier time uh, commenting on, you know, maybe the geopolitics was a broad enough topic that people could chat about 14 and so on, five, seven, six, and six. So I would say, on the average, you know, the more popular talks maybe were around the, you know, 14 to 20, and the rest uh, around the 5, 6. And um, again, this is really a limited sample, but on the overall, we had this um, total of a couple of hundreds. And uh, just maybe to run through some of the comments, we can always go back to the sessions and find. So let's take the geopolitics one, maybe, because it had... Uh, 14 comments, and um, you know, if we zoom in and try to see what's what it was about, uh, um, so th there were some discussions between people, just like in a blog, yeah, 543. So, 543, so 448 was talking to 543. <laughs> this is kind of a typical uh, chat situation, but I mean, in other case. Uh, yeah, there were there were some other comments, and you know we can jump to the promoted comments and see. Uh, so there was some kind of a discussion basically between two people here, and uh, you know the promoted comment, for instance, let's see what it was. I can zoom out and zoom in. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see it's something about the internet as anti-globalization. And um, lets everyone have access to information. Uh, without it, there would be a stranglehold by those few with access to information around the world. Uh, well, okay. So this is this is one of the one of the comments that kind of uh, was a result of a discussion that went pretty much spontaneously between two people arguing about the internet uh, or globalization, which was kind of on topic. And uh, and we can have the results of the votes. At least most of the ones I kind of browsed quickly through had about you know three four people participating. So again, this is not statistically a significant number, but uh, it might give some feedback to people. Uh, uh, and um, you know, basically, we can go and analyze these comments again, try to figure out what was relevant or not. Uh, and um, this is kind of a way to uh, start for us getting feedback, which is I think. Uh, w one of the incentives is really to get this as a natural flow. 
I mean, so you don't have to ask specific questions. You don't need really to uh, prepare a class with questions and answers as students, but this is kind of an open-ended discussion, and uh, we can, you know, uh, provide a lot of additional information so people that walk out from this session might either have these things bookmarked on their computers uh, or uh, have access to basically some summary of, of these things that, you know, if they're logged in, uh, that will be one of the features that the system will provide. So you'll be able to get like a log of what was going in a session. Um, any questions? Uh, mm -hmm. We are beginning to deploy clickers in our classroom. Right. Some very mm -hmm. early uh, loading classes. Right. And it has taken us quite a bit of experience to use them the right way. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I was thinking that perhaps this could be an augmentation, especially if we had a, some kind of a messaging system or editorialization which sort of zooms on to mm -hmm. us rather than you know, the same. Right. Right, right. Well, you could you could do this on any smartphone today. So hopefully, and most of students have it. I mean, actually, I don't have it, but <laughs> I think all the all the younger generation actually does have uh, a lot of them. Majority have uh, you know iPhones. Uh, I I totally agree that you know th this whole this whole idea of getting you know audience response systems like clickers and stuff uh, had been very active in in education and kind of you know it catches up and doesn't catch up. And I think the difficulty is that we don't really, at least myself, and I was considering that, I was also considering that for, for that artistic show that I was doing, it seemed to be a little too limiting because uh, you want to know what's in the audience head, but you don't want to really kind of, if, it, if, it, if it's really a question and answer thing, yes, maybe you can do this. But um, most, most of, uh, I think, uh, for my personal experience uh, when I teach, it's really hard for me to be, that much structured. I mean, and really, it's really basic material. So um, um, uh, there are some, some other interesting experiments like Hot Seat by Purdue University where people can just basically vote on each other's comments. And this is a feedback to the teacher. Uh, there are ways to use Twitter. And we had Twitter chatter, but nobody was on the channel uh, for marketing purposes. Yeah, I think in, the, in that sense, the unique f uh, feature of the system is that, you know, it tries to do some and natural language processing in the background to allow natural interface. And um, maybe in combination with uh, some other projects now that, uh, you know, with online learning today, it seems that people are looking for a lot of ideas. So, yeah, we definitely uh, should interface with, with clickers or, you know, novel versions of, of uh, educational technology in, in this setting, of course. Okay. All right, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.